Welcome to Mendeley video course. You're watching video number two. Why do we need an electronic reference manager? In this video, we will discuss why we need an electronic reference manager and why we have chosen Mendeley as the tool for managing references in this video course. Although fast changing, unfortunately, most people are still using manual methods of organizing the references and it can be a mess. We've all been through this, right? When I started my research career about 15 years ago, the way I searched for literature was haphazard. Partly electronic, partly print journals in the library, not systematic at all. The way I organized literature was haphazard. Sometimes copying the abstracts in a Word document, sometimes taking screenshots of the abstract or articles, sometimes downloading PDF documents with weird names, scattered in different folders across the computer, and so on. Manual typing of citations was cumbersome and often always had errors. Remembering if I was using the same number for a given reference all the time was challenging. Then when I sent a draft to my supervisor for review, he would make changes to the order of the text, sometimes repositioning the entire paragraph. This meant that I had to order my references all over again and it would easily take a couple of days. Then there were different reference styles. If a journal rejected an article and we had to go elsewhere, I had to redo the references all over again to match the style of the new journal. As you can see here, this shows different types of index citations. It could be a number or author date format. The number could be within square brackets, round brackets, superscripted numbers without brackets, all sorts of combinations. Similarly, the author date, the name of the first author only, name of the first two authors, the first two authors and the last author, the year of publication, the date of publication, once again, there are many, many variations here. When it comes to bibliography, there's no end to the possible permutations and combinations of the variations. For example, just take the number of authors. Here we mention six authors followed by an et al. In this journal, we mention three authors followed by an et al. Whereas here we mention all the authors. Similarly, there are variations in the way journal names are written. Sometimes the journal name is written in full, sometimes in abbreviated forms. Add to this variations in used by bold fonts, colons, semicolons, punctuations, and not to mention the order of the fields. Sometimes if you see here, author is followed by year of publication, whereas in this style, the year of publications comes after the name of the journal. These kinds of variations can give rise to thousands and thousands of styles. So while broadly there are only three styles, as discussed in the previous video, there are minor variations to these made by each journal. So it's not an exaggeration to say that there are as many styles as there are the number of journals. The question is, why do we need so many styles? As researchers, should we be focusing on the signs or bold fonts, italics and punctuations? So we wrote an article uh, a couple of years ago and in this article we called upon the global research community to, to think about this and argued for one global reference style to be used in all the journals. We still hope this becomes a reality one day. But until then, we need to use an electronic reference manager to manage our references. So why do we need an electronic reference manager? The first reason is efficiency. Saves time saves effort, saves resources. It prevents errors, so it acts as a way of quality assurance, makes it easy to store our references, easy to share with collaborators, with others, 
easy to access on the go, on the web, on our mobile phones, easy to search, retrieve and cite. And if we need to switch styles, we can easily do, the, do that with the click of a button. Fortunately, there are many tools available for managing references. Some are free, while some are proprietary. And each tool comes with its own advantages and disadvantages. And Mendeley is one of them. We have chosen Mendeley in this particular course because of several reasons. One, it's free. It's free to use, it's free to distribute, teach, and is very, very user friendly. Two, it is cross-platform compatible. It's compatible across operating systems like Windows, Mac, Linux. It's also available on mobile phones, on both Mac iPhones as well as Android phones. It's compatible across different set of browsers like Chrome, Firefox, Safari, Internet Explorer. There are three versions of the software. One is Mendeley Desktop, which is the offline version and provides the most comprehensive experience. And there are two online versions. One is Mendeley Web, other one is Mendeley Mobile. These offer the ability to access references on the go, as well as making notes and annotations. And it also acts as an online backup of all our references. Why Mendeley? Mendeley also provides for seamless synchronization of contents across the three versions, the desktop, the mobile, as well as the web. Mendeley is also an academic social network. It's like the Facebook for researchers. It allows you to promote yourself and your research to the world. It allows you to connect to other researchers in your field, to access the latest discussion on relevant topics. We can also create groups in Mendeley with which we can share our references with our collaborators. We'll come to that in subsequent videos. Mendeley is also a crowdsourced database. It's in fact the largest crowdsourced database of publications providing access to millions of references added by Mendeley users across the globe. Mendeley also provides access to thousands of ready-made reference styles. And if you cannot find one readily, you can also custom create one for your purpose. We will learn all about this in the coming videos. Mendeley also provides access to great resources for self-learning and teaching, all the guides, videos, and also has a good support forum where we can ask questions and resolve our queries. To summarize, in this video, we learned why we should be using an electronic reference manager and why we prefer Mendeley in this video course. I hope it was useful. In the next video, we will learn how to install Mendeley. Thanks for watching.